morning class. I think that everybody is okay. Yes. Uh, my name is Jacques Claude Kaigamba. I have a bachelor's degree in travel and tourism management. I'm, I'm, I'm a trainer at Tirisedo from 2016. So I am here as your trainer for teaching you uh, a module in this morning, uh, what you call tour guiding uh, all how work as guide, module called work as guide. So this module, the objective of the, our module or our session, uh, at the end of this session, learner will be able to define uh, tour guide, will be able to define tour and guiding. Another objective is, is the learner can differentiate type of guide and identify tour guide activities uh, and should be able to clarify the role and responsibilities of tour guide. Those are objectives of our module or our session. So let us start with introduction. Uh, you can define tour guide uh, is a services, is a services that include tourist or organization, control, identification, or explain into tourism. So the tour guide can explain different tourism attraction on different uh, destination. So we have the key terms used in the tour guiding. The first term uh, is a tour. You can define a tour. A tour is referred to a program that involves to, uh, the movement of individual from one point to another. A tour is like a movement, is like travel, uh, is a, like activity of moving from one place to another. Another key term of tour guiding is guiding. Guiding is like directing or orienting by in interpreting and explaining. Uh, continue next. Uh, the, in your model, we have the types of tour guide. The types of tour guide, we have different types of tour guide, but the most important of them is uh, number one, or A, is on site guide. The on site guide refers to, the, to a person or a guide that is found at the destination or site. Example, example of on site guide. Uh, a driver who drives a car and giving information concerning a trip. Another type of tour guide is driver guide. Driver guide uh, refers an individual who acts both as a driver and a guide. Example, a driver who drives a car and giving information concerning a trip. Sometimes uh, drive a uh, uh, tour guide that can drive on the same time. You can drive and you, guess, uh, you can explain some tourism uh, attraction on the destination. Uh, number three is specialized. So number three is general guide. The general guide uh, refers to a person who is well versed with a different corner, corner of the attraction and destination. Uh, next is Specialized guide. Specialized guide is referred to a guide who is expertise in specific field on specific activities like tourism, birding, uh, game driving, agriculture guide. Some uh, some tour guides are specialized in uh, in uh, in the the job. Example, you you will be specialized about culture about Rwandan culture. You, you will be explicit about uh, inf uh, information or historical of destination. So the next types of tour guide is person or private guide. Is a person who may take a few people around the destination. This guide 
can organize short trip around the destination example in the local the local people can take initiative information about attraction next is city guide city guide are very important in guiding activities because they have no skills about cities uh, this is a person who point and make comment of the highlight at usually from a motors coach minibus and of an old van but sometimes as a part of working tour last is free guide or step free guide or step on a guide those are people who are independently they work independently uh, and they just mind to give the services dealing a tour yes can you continue uh in the tour guide uh, the tour guide uh, they have different role uh, in the tourism industry. The first role of tour guide is to mobilize the tour group. Uh, tour guide has a lot of mobilizing or making a mobilization to tour group in order to, to create uh, the hope or liking uh, to visit a destination. Second, managing tour group activity. You, ma the role of tour guide uh, is to manage the tour group to know uh, the number of group to know the number of tourists to know the date of trip another is interpret about attraction to the tour tour guide has a lot of interpreting those attraction to the tour group that's why it's better to have more skills to have enough skills about the destination in order to explain them uh, about historical about culture tourism and so on. So, tour guide promote culture and natural heritage. Next, tour guide it provides all information about the features and historical to local as important place. Tour guide has a lot of explain all information about the destination in order to convince them and in order to convince them to like a destination. It's it's better to provide all information about the nations. guide next is guide provide entertainment and give relevant information about tour uh, about the place the tour guide has a lot of preparing or to organize the entertainment on the tour activities like to relax to participate in the nightclub is a lot of tour guide next is guide response or question asked a uh, guide has a lot of explaining very well all questions from tourists, all questions from customers. Uh, that's why it's better to have all information about the destination in order to explain or to respond all questions from tourists. The next is, uh, we have a skills of tour guide. A tour guide must have enough skills in order to perform very well the job of tour guide. Uh, the general skills, you can, uh, I can ask you, what are the differences between general skills and specific, uh, specific uh, skills? Who can explain what are the differences between general skills and specific skills? Who can explain? Yes. The general skills is those skills needs for tour guide in order to perform very well the job of tour guide activities. But the specific skills is like ability, ability of tour guide. Ability of tour guide in order to perform very well the job of tour guide. So let us start with general skills. The general skills, a, 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 a tour guide must have a good, uh, must love and care about people. A uh, tour guide must have love of tourists, must have uh, love of people. Uh, the next must have good organizer. General, uh, the uh, tour guide must have enough capacity of organize different trip for tourists. Uh, the next must be experienced in leading people. You, the tour guide must have a skills of uh, of leading people, of organize people, of explaining very well about information. Uh, uh, first to the destination uh, for people. 
The next is must have the knowledge about travel issues. In the destination, in the travel, we, have meet, we can meet with different problems or issues. That's why uh, to a guide must have a skills of, of, uh, of handling those travel issues. Because the travel or tourists, they have a hope to tour guide. Because they hope that tour guide has all skills or knowledge about travel issues. Next, must, uh, must be where trained and tour guiding concerned. In the tour guiding activities, it's better to, uh, to organize more training. That importance of have more training is to increase the skills or knowledge about tour guiding uh, job. Should you know foreign languages? The foreign language is very important in tour guiding activities because some tourists, they can use different languages. Example, who can uh, tell us the international languages? We have, uh, who can uh, tell us the international languages? Yes, yes. The one is French. Some tourists, they can use French. That's why you must have all knowledge about uh, French languages. Another international language is English. Some tourists, they come to visit a destination and they use English. That's why tour guide has, must have a skill of using those international languages. B is a specific or interpersonal skills. The specific, remember, that is ability. Ability of tour guide that you must have in order to perform very well. So, a good tour guide must have a relationship with tourists and customers. It's better to, to create relationship with tourists. Because when you, uh, you create relationship between tour guide and the uh, tourists, it creates uh, it create confidence, it creates a hope, it creates friendship. That's why you must have a relationship with tourists and customers. Must have respect. It's better to, to respect those tourists. Because when you respect tourists, they can, they can create a relationship between the tour guide and the tourists. Must work with other guides and the destination to share. In the tour guiding activities, it's better to share with other tour guides for uh, different destinations to share uh, idea, information, and new information if it's at the destination and the others. So, must be cooperative. You must be cooperative working with, uh, with others. Don't, not work by individual. It's better to work with others. So, must be calm. Be calm before tourists. No, not be talkative before tourists. When you guide the tourists, not be talkative. It's better to speak in a necessary word, necessary information, necessary idea, and so on. So next, to a guiding code and conduct. We have different code, uh, codes uh, uh, of conduct in the tour guiding activities. First, uh, to maintain company commitment to prepare, serve tourists. Some tour guide, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they work for different uh, companies. It's better to, uh, to have a good attitude in order to perform well. Next is it present, uh, pre to present him or herself, respectable dress code. Have a dress code. Dress code for tour guide is green color. To show patriotism. You must have patriotism of your countries. If you are tour guide, it's better to have patriotism for your countries. Uh, to cut responsibility and situation in misunderstandable that could result in a conflict. So, uh, in the tour activities, sometimes there are conflict from tourists or conflict from destination. So, to a guide must have a capacity or must be ability of resolving those conflicts from tourists in order to convince them or to help them to, vi to be feel free. Also, to avoid the discrimination in providing services to main tourists, regardless color, size. Ignorance in, in tour guiding activities, ignorance is not important. It's better to respect those tourists. Example, 
Logardiness for color, not depending on size, region, or social classes. To protect the legal light and interest tourists, the in the tourism industry, you have different legal or light. That's why to our guide must have ability of respect legal light or interest first in it for, for, uh, for tourists in order to respect them. Next is to interpret or explain the languages chosen by tour group or persons. Tour guide must have a capacity of interpret or explain in the languages chosen by tour group or person. As you know, different tourists, they use different languages. The tourists can choose uh, a language that you can use in the destination or in tour guide activities. It's, it's better to explain or to impress, uh, interpret any language chosen by tour group or person. Uh, very well, uh, the tour guide must have different qualities. Who can tell us some qualities of tour guide? The qualities of tour guide, there are many. But the most important of them is to, uh, uh, is out, uh, a quality of tour guide, the first one is outgoing personality. Outgoing personality is a very important skill for tour guide because uh, this means that a tour guide should be a person who is not able to make social and speak publicly. To a guide must have a quality of speaking publicly, in, speaking in a public area. Because uh, you can organize to a group of diff, uh, many number of people. That's why you must have a quality of speaking publicly. Uh, next, quality of to a guide is organization. Organization is the very important qualities of to a guide because uh, to, to a guide must be a person who pens ahead a time and arrangement. In the tour guide activities, it, it, it's better to, uh, to respect the time. To respect the time in order to, uh, to avoid, uh, the, uh, avoid that the tours can be bored. Because you have a long time, you, ha you can use uh, many hours or many minutes the, that causes uh, to a guide to be bored. It's better to have a, a quality of organizing tour. Extreme tactics. A tour guide must have the ability of handle people to work well with others. Next, a tour guide must have good health. It's better to have to be a physical fitness for tour guide because tour guide, uh, in order to perform very well in tour guide activities, it's better to have good health to be to have physical fitness. Because in the tour guiding, you can tour guide tourists in high mountain. That's why you must have physical fitness, fitness or to have good health. So commitment. Com uh, commitment is very important. Uh, co uh, and a commitment in the tour guiding activities, it's better to have a commitment uh, to work with others, to love your job, to, to work in, uh, in extraordinary time, it's better to have a practice of big commitment on your, uh, uh, your task. To a guide must be a person who does work every activity who has the leadership skills. Leadership skills, a tour guide must be a person who is able to manage all aspects of a tour with maturity and ensure that things are done systematic, methodological. Uh, a tour guide must have maturity because uh, uh, you, you can organize a tour for maturity people. That's why tour guide must have enough maturity. Uh, professionalism in a tour guiding. In a tour guiding, you can con, uh, concern or consider to appearance for tour guide. Appearance for tour guide, this consists dressing lady with appropriate Clover and the groom. Your appearance, you must have a good appearance before tourists. Before tourists. Example, uh, you can uh, focus on dress co dressing code. Dressing code, you, you know that dressing code for tour guide is green color. That's why it's a green color. Well, that's why it's a green color for tour guide. Because green color 
is like to be social, socialized with environmental colors. You know that all destination has is it could environmental. Uh, the, uh, the color of environmental is green color. That's why Tuagaida must have a dressing code of green color. Uh, attitude, avoid having a negative attitude. It's better to uh, avoid the negative attitude in tour guiding activities. Because when you have bad attitude before tourists, sometimes they can, it can cause it to reduce more number of tourists because they see that you, a tour guide for the scenario, they have bad attitude. So you must have cooperative. Refer to maintain a good relation with the less of the group and the flow worker, always be good to collaboration. Uh, ability. You have, must have ability of able to provide the tour pre briefing, briefing and the debriefing. What is pre briefing? Pre briefing is information you give, you provide to tours before you start a tour or a trip. Uh, briefing is information you provide uh, to tours before, before you start your tour. The, the briefing is a, a information or correcting data or correcting feedback at the end of tour. It's better to give them the briefing. The uh, importance of the briefing it helps us to know the ideas from tourists. No, uh, some notice in tour guiding activities is a briefing. A briefing, this is information provided, as you say, as, as I say, is this uh, uh, pre briefing is information provided by tour guide before getting at the destination. Time example of pre briefing is time remaining. You can explain tourists uh, time uh, you can use that you can use from the point to at the destination. You can explain them distance of remaining. You can explain to the distance, uh, the distance from your home your, or your accommodation to at the destination. Uh, destination rules and regulation. It's better to explain them destination rules and regulation. Because they, uh, they know regulation of destination, they, uh, they cause to them they perform or, or they have good attitude at the at destination. Uh, climate and weather. Climate, uh, the, some example of pre-briefing is climate and weather. It's better to explain them about dress code used in tour guiding activities. You remember that dress code is green color. I think that you remember that. Okay. Travel document. It's better to explain them what about travel, doc uh, travel document. Travel document, example, who can explain, explain as travel document? Travel document, example, is passport, visa, ID. Those are travel document that are needed for tourists. Uh, stop poet, it helps tourists to show uh, to shop different uh, different items, different goods when you are away. Itinerary element. Itinerary element is very important as considered as pre briefing. Who can tell us itinerary element? Example of itinerary element is like tour program. Is like uh, tour program is like for IS, for IS, for IS meaning, for IS meaning attraction, accessibility, accommodation, and amenities. Uh, another element of itinerary is destination. The briefing, the briefing, this is a set of information shared between the guide and the group member after visiting different attraction of the destination. Some examples of the, uh, the briefing is giving contact. You can giving. Now that you remember that the briefing is all information that you, you can collect after or at the end of two. The example of the briefing is giving. You can give them con your contact. You can give them a picture taking. You can buy trips, souvenirs. You can 
give them comments or suggestions, asking address, and you can say goodbye. Uh, in the tour guiding activities, you have different challenges. Some challenges, especially about weather. Weather refer to the change. Weather, sometimes in the tour guiding activities, there will be climate change. Sometimes you can, uh, you can have bad climate. You can have, example, high temperature. You can uh, have bad wind. You can have bad sunshine, you can have bad precipitation, you can have atmosphere pressure, you can have humidity, you can have cloud cover. Those are uh, challenges in tour guiding activities. The next challenge faced in tour guiding is, is security. Security is a big challenge in tour guiding activities because sometimes the, in the destination it may not be very safe with some libas or armed criminal that may abduct the tourists. Uh, in the again activity, it's, it's better to verify the security of the destination in order to prevent or to, to avoid different accidents from bad security or uh, from uh, bad safe on the destination. Some factors which can affect tourists in terms Insecurity are Bali, hijacking, harassment, social conflict in the destination, international wars, or violence to tourists. The next, crime. Crime is in the street, you can meet with crime. Criminals may uh, snatch tourists belonging, especially during a street tour, like uh, tourism and so on. Climate behaviors, you can meet with bad climate behavior, you can meet with bad behaviors from climate. It's a big challenge in the guiding activities because this is may include a poor time management, aggressive from client who may bury other tourists and disrespect the guide. Then number five consider as a challenge is drunkard. Drunkard. Some tourists, they can take alcoholic. They can take a high drunkard. They can take cocaine. When they take a different alcohol, example, uh, more, uh, they can take beer. They can have mis bad conduct on the destination, or they can have bad behavior or bad attitude in the tour guiding activities. Is challenge to tour guide. The all know all sub suburban clients. Sometimes you can meet with tourists which has uh, which which has uh, more information more than you. So this will inter interfere with the guide speak all the time and ask unnecessary question. Sometimes the tourists they can ask unnecessary question. Example when you. You, you, you have a tour in the example in Akadia National Park. Some tours, they can ask you, explain us what about genocide of Tutsi. Ah, it is, it's, it's a big challenge. They can ask a necessary question. So it's better to, uh, to give them advice, advice to ask necessary question in the tour guiding. Look, uh, local communities, you can meet with a challenge from local communities. So local communities, they can have conflict with them and the, tour guide, uh, and the tourists. Local communities, they can destroy uh, a destination. Uh, in the, uh, in the tour guide activities, you can use different equipment. An equipment which is necessary in the tour guide activities, you can use campus. You can use GPS. You can use CCTV. You can use umbrella. You can use a map, you can use, so a map towards, you can use atlas, you can use white sticks, uh, you can use two-way lead, you can use weapo, you can use torch, the tour guiding, you can digi you use digital, you can use telephone in order to communicate between you and your colleagues, 
or when you have difference group in our guiding, you can use telephone in order to communicate between one group and the another group. Kitchen equipment, you can use a kitchen equipment when you have accommodation. You can use binocular in order to, to see those animals or those attractions which are in long distance. You can use binoculars. You can use computer in order to record all data from tourists. So in tour guiding activities, we have different steps of preparing a tour. The first step is the planning phase. Planning phase is an important step because it helps us to know all information about the destination. Before you start your tour, it's better to have enough information about the destination. So, and to be informed, you must have, you, uh, you must be informed about weather and climate. It's better to have information about climate of destination. It's better to have information about closing time, uh, to have information about open, open time and closing time. You must have information about the distance from your home and the destination. You can have information about attraction of destination. In the tour guiding activities, it's better to, to be informed about attraction of destinations. Second step of preparing a tour is journal phases. In the journal phases, we can start, you, you must know the start. You will start from the departure place and the time of providing pre-briefing to tour lists before you start your journal. Next phase is the destination phase. You, in the destination, uh, destination phase, start with visiting. You must have, you must know the, uh, a time of providing a briefing to tourists before you start your tour. The tiny phase, next phase is the tiny phase. The tiny phase is the start after visiting and the, you know a time of providing the briefing to tourists. You remember the importance of providing the briefing to tourists. So now uh, last is the uh, Le Viva phases. Is in this phase, start when the tourist reach home and telling his all her family about the trip. Sometimes the tourist, when the tourists reach at their home, they can tell different stories which have seen on the destination. Example, in their family, in their group member, in their friends, in their location, and so on. So, the next, in order to have full information or to have full skills about tour guiding activities, let's watch the video of tourism activities in Akajia National Park as destinations. Welcome to Akajira National Park. Its brand new reception is now operational. It's called Akagera National Park and normally the Akagera is this river that borders Tanzania and Rwanda. And actually it's the same river that goes up to the Nile. Originally, the park covered 2,500 kilometers squared in eastern Rwanda, and now it covers 1,200 kilometers squared due to a land redistribution exercise that took place in 1997. Akajira National Park touches on Kayonza, Gatsiwo, and Nyagatari districts in the eastern province. It lies along the border between Rwanda and Tanzania. It was created to protect animals and vegetation in three eco-regions, namely savanna, mountain, and swamp. So normally, each and every species of the animals lives where he feels is able to live. They say like hippos, you now the life is water. 
because you know they've got a bare skin which dries so quickly so they can't stand the heat in the daytime. Crocodiles as well, their life is water. So they, they are not land animals actually. Like hippos at night, they can come out of water, they graze the whole night, and early in the morning they get back to the water. And the other animals, let's say like giraffes, like buffalo, zebras, and they will have different uh, species of antelopes. They actually like this area of the hills and valleys because it's more open than the area on the wetland. Because, you know, always near the water, uh, the vegetation is quite different from the hills, from the valleys, because they have enough water, so they grow thick and with lots of bushes. So some of the animals, they are actually not like that place because it's, it's not open. And uh, some they do like, elephants because they are quite big and like hippos as well they are not disturbed by any predators as well like the antelopes like buffaloes like zebras so they can only come down for a drink in a dry season and then after that they get back to their former area thanks very much for listening thank you we're excited we're from Canada ready yes ready <laughs> And uh, these are the Basai giraffes, and they were introduced from Kenya. We didn't have any giraffes in Rwanda before, and they brought on six, and now we have uh, about 60 of them. So they are quite, and the gestation period of a giraffe is 14 and a half months. That they are do like kind of fighting. And normally they, they do it with the nets. They call it a necking fight. During the game drive, along a well-designed network of tracks, there are plenty of animals one can see, including herds of giraffes, elephants, buffaloes, zebra, antelopes, baboons, and many other mammal species. A boat ride in Lake Ihema provides an opportunity to see hippos, crocodiles, and other aquatic species, and takes you to Kwa Nyirabiyoro, a small but historical island on which you find crocodiles and hippos resting on the beach. Akajara National Park is also home to more than 500 bird species. In what looks like a completely different world, a night game drive offers tourists an opportunity to see animals they won't see during the day. After touring it, reactions are, it is amazing. The park has a lot to please tourists. At this very place, we are witnessing the beauty of Rwanda. We have been very pleased to see animals like the giraffe there. The park has a wonderful nature and fresh air. This is my very first visit to a park and it is very amazing. We were very eager to visit the park. We used to hear about it from others or learn about it on TV. We are now experiencing it. It is a very pleasing experience. Oh, it's very beautiful. The, the hills are rolling and the giraffes that we've seen, and you can see them up close and it's very nice. Um, pretty much what we've seen. I mean, I didn't expect to see all the animals up close right away, but almost immediately we saw a group of giraffes and that was exciting. I'll tell them if they can to come and visit Rwanda because it's a beautiful country and uh, Kigare is a beautiful park. The buffalo, we saw a lot of buffalo, which was really exciting because they were um, taking a rest time. So we saw male and female, and that was identified. And the giraffes were just wandering around, and actually they did their neck hitting business. <laughs> and that was just amazing to see, and I, I caught some on video, so I'm really happy to take that back home. These tourists 
visited the park for one day. And here you have the host couple that toured the park on a daily basis for a period of more than two weeks. Well, it's a beautiful place. What I like about it in relation to other parks I've been, it's, it's, um, it's the diversity of the incredible beautiful scenery when you, when you go up in the mountains and then the, the almost inaccessible um, swamp area, which of course you can see is already a very uh, big difference. And, and of course there is so much space for, for, for lots of animals. We had a really good chance to experience the whole park from south to north, back and forth, and um, see the whole variety of all the animals and the diversity of the, of the park. And um, I absolutely uh, love the stunning landscapes that you get on that ridge road. Um, you just can't get enough of it. And especially if you go at various times of the day, like we've been in the very early morning, like um, six o'clock, you have the fog rising and it's absolutely stunning. And any time you go of the day, you find a different view actually. And of course the animals, the hippos are exciting and uh, crocodiles and uh, boat strips. And of course the um, fish eagles around Druzizi camp. Is for somebody who loves birds, it's something very special to see so many of them and um, so close actually. So that was a great experience. All visitors appreciate what the park has today. But the best is yet to come because the park is undergoing modernization and renovation thanks to a partnership that was established between Rwanda Development Board, RDB, and African Parks, a South African-based NGO. In 2009, the government of Rwanda invited African Parks Network, a South African-based NGO, to come and help manage Akagera National Park, primarily to join with the RDB, African Parks, and RDB to form a company called Akagera Management Company, which is in charge of the management of Akagera National Park as a whole. African Parks is a 10-year-old organization with a lot of um, experience in seven other countries, Malawi, Zambia, Congo, Chad, um, and now Rwanda, um, managing other government parks. Um, so it is, we have brought the expertise with us and the funding with us to try and rebuild Akagera. So far, immediate impact has been to fix the roads in Akagera National Park so we can promote tourism, increase law enforcement and coverage of the park, and we've increased the, the infrastructure of the park. The partnership between African Parks and RDB is bearing fruit. In 2011, Akajara National Park saw a significant increase in tourist numbers with 20,657 guests visiting the park and generating 400,000 US dollars in revenue. This represents 30% in tourism revenue and 35% in tourist numbers compared to figures of 2010. In 2012, the park also did well in generating revenues and tourist attraction. There was an increase of over 73% in park revenue from 2010 to end of October 2012. This resulted in an increase of 40% in visitor numbers over the same period. For these achievements to be maintained and sustained, a Kajira management company has put increased attention on law enforcement to curb poaching activities. Rangers were recruited through an intensive training and provided with appropriate equipment. Patrol coverage was increased, resulting into the arrest of more than 300 poachers. To cap down the problem of poaching, and uh, one, one of the equipments that we are, we are putting in place first are the, are the cars, the cars that are facilitating patrols, and then also uh, networking inside the park, uh, putting proper roads that facilitate uh, faster movements uh, to apprehend or arrest poachers. 
and then uh, also in general, uh, the fence uh, is there to bring down the, um, the animal-human uh, conflicts in general. Uh, poaching inclu uh, inclusive. We'll be recruiting new new new, new rangers who will be joining the 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 ones that we are we, we are we've been, we are we're remaining with that have been seconded to, to the to the company that is managing Kajia National Park. Uh, currently, we have uh, 23 uh, rangers, so we are approximately we are uh, we will be recruiting uh, an equal number. With that number, I think it's uh, an effective with uh, well, yeah, uh, good equipment, the problem will be curbed. Some of the key um, uh, elements that we have been working on has been the fencing, which is uh, near completion. Uh, I think this, this will help in terms of uh, reducing the conflicts uh, or the issues that have emanated from animals going out of the park, uh, but also protecting the wildlife that is within the park. It also allows to be able to do a proper zoning uh, which basically entails, you know, what are, what are the trends, where are the animals found. Uh, so far there have already been some work in terms of uh, rehabilitations of roads within the park. Uh, we are working uh, with uh, different stakeholders to strengthen and reduce uh, the, the poaching, um, uh, which uh, is, still, uh, is still an issue. Akadira Management Company has embarked on helping former poachers to engage in other income generating activities through cooperatives. It is as well educating surrounding communities on park conservation. It has conducted environmental education to over 4,000 local school children and organized visits to the park for over 1,000 children from the local community. In 2011, more than 3,500 local community members received environmental education classes. Akajira Management Company has a revenue sharing scheme by which 5% of revenues generated from the park are invested into community outreach programs like supplying clean water. Every national park needs to have a community department. You can't have a national park without the community. Otherwise, um, we'll always be in conflict. So there's a lot of sensitization taking place. Um, a lot of IGA's income generating activities. 5% um, of our revenue here at Akagera is generated into the community making cooperatives, dairy cooperative. We're part of the one cow per family scheme as well. Um, and most importantly, as mentioned already, is employment. If we're here, we need to bring employment, which brings money directly to the communities, but also directly in the pocket of the people. For the last two and a half years, Akajira Management Company employed more than 200 community members on average. These employees pocketed home approximately 315,000 US dollars. The partnership between RDB and African Parks is based on a 20-year renewable agreement. Akajira Management Company believes the first five years of that partnership are very important in achieving the vision of Akajira National Park. Okay, the first five years is the most important years of developing Akagera. After that, we should have developed and put enough income, capital expenditure in for it to become self-sustainable, which is the vision of Akagera. But the first five-year budget, we have a budget of $10 million, which is capital expenditure, but also operational expenditure. We've got to remember that um, there are key components, such as law enforcement, which is not infrastructure, but monitoring the park, equipping the rangers with proper equipment to patrol to reduce the impact of poaching. There's uh, fencing projects and also the, the new lodges which we've built, which has already used $600,000 this last year. We've built new offices, new workshop, management houses, staff houses, doing staff training. So all of these components are considered in the basically the $10 million for the five-year development stage. As we identify that tourism is a key component for Akagera to make itself sustainable, as I said, we've fixed the roads, but we've brought in new vehicles to do tourism drives. We've brought in new products of night drives. We've 
brought in three new boats to do boating safaris for tourists so they can get to see animals like crocodiles and hippos. And just um, in this last month, we've opened a new lodge called Ruzizi Tented Camp. The new lodge known as Ruzizi Tented Camp came as an alternative accommodation to visitors in Akajira National Park. Its location on the shores of Lake Ihema and in the middle of magnificent trees makes it a unique structure in the country offering visitors a rare experience. Akigira specifically has got Rizizi Tented Camp uh, or Tented Lodge. Um, it's the first in Rwanda, so it's something totally unique. Accommodation is all based in tents, so it's a little bit more up class, upper market than your normal camping style. Um, so that's quite unique. So if you want something totally unique, come to Akigera. It was a fantastic experience. Coming from uh, colder Norway, it's very good to come here and actually sit and have a nice quiet dinner outside with an open fire listening to the animals, the birds, and just enjoying with people in a very small atmosphere. The night in the tent was very good. Of course you can, yeah, when you stay and you listen to all the animals, all the different sounds, you hear the hippo, we went up in the morning to see them. So you actually saw them here on the riverside, on the lakeside. Good. Yeah, I know. I believe it's a kind of a first um, in in Rwanda this sort of camp, um, and it's it's absolutely stunning. I'm impressed, very impressed. The food has been great. The um, the, the the rooms, the tents are comfortable. Um, they look after you very well here. So you know, there's nothing that you could wish for more. So you can recommend it to to anybody to come here, have a great time especially at Ruzizi Camp. <laughs> Ruzizi Tented Camp is not alone in making Akajira National Park a unique place. The park's landscape, vegetation and animals offer a special experience to visitors. I've been to different parks. I've been to Masai Mara and other parks in the area. Uh, I think what is unique here is that you have the lake. So it's a combination of, of lake and and planes and yeah, it's very nice. It gives a different atmosphere. Last night we had a, a, a beautiful moonrise, which is, which is actually quite rare, you know, to, to see this. And then of course you listen to the noises and the, the water in the in the jungle. And I mean, it ca it carries on throughout the night. It's it's quite amazing, you know. Sometimes you don't you don't have to see an animal, but you you know it's there. You know, and it's absolutely full of, full of this, full of life. Scenery in Akagera is absolutely stunning. Um, you've got some viewpoints here that are second to none. Um, coming from South Africa, it's a totally different experience over here. Um, the activities in the park is quite diverse. We've got game drives, we've got Lake Iyema, so we do a couple of boat trips. You can see fish eagles, hippo, crocodiles. Um, so it's a, it's a really nice park to come and visit, really, really nice park. Both local and foreign tourists are welcome to enjoy the beauty of Akajira National Park. Visitors from Rwanda have a chance to tour the park at a lesser price. I came to visit this park in order to enjoy our country's beauty. As a Rwandan, I wanted also to know animals living in the park. What I liked the most about it is that I saw buffaloes, zebra, antelopes and bush pigs. I had never seen any of these animals before. Rwandans can visit the park. Prices are affordable as the government has facilitated Rwandans who want to visit the park. Visitors of Akajira National Park appreciate how the park is managed. They even believe a bright future lies ahead for the park. Management of course is, is tops. I think it's, it's, very, it's very well done, very, very well done. I, th I actually see a, a great future um, because I mean this is only the beginning and there's not really such an abundance of animals that you will see in 10 years time. I'm absolutely sure about it. You know, this is only the beginning, so, um, and it, it's exciting, it's an exciting park, it really is. Uh, all these lakes, they're just, when you look up from, 
from the ridge road down onto the lakes. It's unbelievable. And um, people are doing a great job here already. So I just can imagine that when we come back in 10 years' time, it will be a magnificent a park with beautiful animals. Akajira Management Company says it is working hard to make the park more pleasant for visitors. For the future, obviously, we'd like Akagera to become a big five national park, which means we'd like it to have the, the rhino and the lion, which have been missing for the last years, and that will be complemented with what we already have, the elephant, the buffalo, the leopard. Um, so we'd like it to become a big five park, which is very good for tourism. We'd like to also, in the north of the park, to build another lodge, another luxury lodge, um, and keep, keep the protection of the animals so they multiply and keep increasing the products like walking trails, walking safaris and such. Uh, we think that the Kagera National Park has a great future. Uh, we have uh, been in partnership with the Kagera Management Company uh, on, uh, on the management of the park. We're looking at starting reintroduction. Uh, and, uh, and we feel that that will also give uh, an opportunity if we have a rhino, for instance, into uh, the park, that will be a value addition and, and see how we can, uh, in the near future, offer the, the big five. So I would say it's, it's really uh, integrating all these different initiatives to make uh, the park and its surrounding an, a, quite an attraction that will benefit both the national park, the tourism sector and the communities around. The summary of it all will be new roads, new lodge, new services, plenty of animals, a new vision of Akajira National Park achieved. Okay, thank you with, for being with us. Thank you for your attention. Uh, you are good students. Uh, my contact uh, is 0 7 8 8 8 1 8 7 10. I think that you remember that I am trainer at Tirisedo Rangicherezi. Uh, my, uh, my name is Jean-Claude Kaligamba. Thank you for your attention. Uh, we hope that you will meet next time. Thank you.